today on Kenny's Garage we're going to plastic gauge our rod bearings. Now, I'll explain to you a little bit about what we're doing here. The rods are actually already on the pistons, but I don't want to install the piston with rings and all, drop it down the cylinder and figure out if my bearings are sized properly for the rod journals or not. So I'm actually going to take a rod with a piston, drop it down carefully into the cylinder without any rings on it just so that I can lay some plastic gauge in the cap end and torque it to specs and see how these look. After that, after we do all six, then I will put my own oil squirt notches into the bearing, which is something they don't do anymore, but it's something the factory definitely recommends. Let's do that now. So what I have here is my plastic gauge. Now some of you might be asking, what's a plastic gauge? So it is a small piece of waxy strand right here and you put it across your bearings like so. I'll cut off a piece and we'll lay it in there. And we'll do that so that we can torque this to spec and then we'll use this guide on here. You'll see one side is metric, one side is in thousandths of an inch and you'll go to your service manual and say okay what clearance do I need to be when that wax is compressed and then you remove the cap you'll be able to measure it I wanted to show you that I'll show you this what this looks like whether you are reassembling a used motor and you're just putting new bearings back in it or you get it back from the machine shop always do this always do this because sometimes people make mistakes and you don't want to find out after you put everything together although most machine shops let's face it they do a great job and you could probably slap this all back together, but we also did a video where we uh, used plastic gauge on the crankshaft when it went in the block, and everything was specced perfect at two thousandths clearance, right in between the range. So here's our rod piston assembly. I've got the rod journal. Let me show you up at the twelve o'clock position. You can see the rod journal down in there. I want it closed because I want to see if I can get this rod set on the journal without having to reach around on the bottom side and grab it. Notice I have my protectors on the studs here. These will keep me from accidentally scratching the, the rod journal, the crankshaft. So let's see if we can set this in here. Keep my hand out of the way. And I'm still going to come underneath here. So I carefully set the rod into place. You can see it right there resting on the journal. Now that journal is at top dead center. I don't have any problem with turning it real slow and bringing it down to where I can get to it. Okay, let's cut our plastic gauge. Should be about enough right there. This is the orientation you'll have it in when you put the bearing cap on. You want it as straight as possible across the bottom. Something like that. And the trick is going to be now getting it to stay in place while we bolt it up. I want to carefully... Hopefully it doesn't move. might take a look at this see where it's stamped on the side of the rod right here this side will say five the other side will say six well on one side of all of these rods it'll say six because the manufacturer said okay it's for a six cylinder the other side is supposed to be the number the cylinder number it came in well my machine shop just grabbed this assembly and called it number one and that's fine but this is number one marked on the piston it's actually number five when it started life in the engine. Let's go ahead and torque these down. All right. Let's get on these to a service torque of 33 pounds. Can't wait to see what our clearance is here. Always makes me a little nervous. Okay. All we have to do now is actually just take them back off. 
Once your plastic gauge is in there and you torque your rod down, don't rotate your crankshaft. Remember you have no lube on these bearings, you're just setting plastic gauge in place. There we go. Let's take it over to the bench and have a look at it. This one isn't the easiest to see. I'm hoping you guys can see that. At the right angle you can see the plastic gauge and how wide it's smeared. It's just basically smashed, smashed down. In our clearance we don't want to be more than two thousandths of an inch, preferably one and a half. And I can tell by looking at the green pattern on there. Well, just kind of move it around so you can see it. Two thousandths is right there. I'm a little bit wider than that. One and a half is right there. I'm not quite that wide. So we're somewhere just a little bit tighter than two thousandths of an inch. Hope you guys can see that. A lot of times it's easier to read. This particular one's not that easy to read for some reason. But uh, looks like we're looking good on the clearance here. Okay, so I flipped the block over and I wanted to show you the the cam journal. This is actually what we should be looking at. It just it shows up so much better. You guys can probably see that. Line easier. If I line up the the crush mark, I'm right at 1.5 thousandths. I'm very happy with that, because that's where we need to be. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what we did. Uh, I've got some other rod bearings I wanted to show you. These are, uh, I was a little concerned at first. Um, we had four sets for our inline six that were manufactured in 2009 that were made in the USA. And you can tell they're a little different because they have the that factory coating that comes on them. Let me show you that box again. So here's your Jeep. CJ 258 cubic inch 4.2 liter rod bearings and this is what you guys are used to seeing probably this um, coating that comes from the factory of course that will be gone right after you run the engine but it's an extra coating on there probably just protects the bearing surface and then I ended up with four boxes that came uh, that were made in 2021 so much newer and the manufacturing is now in Mexico. And they look different too. If we put them side by side, you can see, you know, there's no coating on the uh, Mexican made ones versus the American made ones that are 13 years old. Um, so I was first, I was like, well, let's give them a try and see, cause I don't know if they're going to fit the same and the first one I tried is fine if we look at the plastic gauge over here against the one we just did, it's the same. So 15 ten thousandths or 1.5 thousandths, that's right where the book says we should be. This is rod number two, I wanted to show you that. Also wanted to uh, go over that oil squirt hole. You can see the oil squirt hole there. We talked about that briefly. We're going to cut our own grooves into the bearings. Okay, so we talked about making our own oil squirt holes in these bearings. I've taken my bearings and I took a practice bearing. I had an extra set and I tried the 3 seconds cutter, the 1 8 cutter, uh, tried various stones, nothing seemed to work as well as a cutoff wheel. Um, it won't be quite as wide, but if you get it somewhat in the center and move it back and forth, it actually makes the cleanest hole. Let's make our own right now. And that should be about adequate. Just need to get a little bit of oil to squirt through there and it's a little bit smaller than the factory ones than they used to put in the bearings but not by much so i'll go ahead and clean it up with a small buffing wheel as well make sure everything all the burrs are gone 
that was easy five more to go okay so I wanted to show you the rod upper bearing after the cut was made you can see that the notch is in there we should be able to squirt oil just fine out the back side and we just finished up checking plastic gauging all of the rod bearings and everything is within spec so we're looking good all right so it's time to ring our pistons new rings did we get all these rings just out of the box and slap them in and hope they fit nope so actually each and every one of these especially the compression rings we went ahead and each cylinder got its own rings gapped and then you keep track of them and put them with the piston that's going to be going in there because each bore was done to the piston that's the correct way to do it so these rings this is the top ring and the second compression ring so here's your second one second ring just go by the box there's all different kinds of ways to mark your first and second ring it's your second one these were all gapped in the cylinders they were all within spec oil rails oil expander and what I do is I set up kind of an assembly line you can see we've got all these done already um, piston is always clamped facing the same way we always start out the same way so oil expander I always put this over one of the wrist pin bosses keep them consistent put them all this way facing up first oil ring I put my gap up at 12 o'clock this is the front of an inline six and I want to put this one on the bottom bottom rail first so it is off the expander by about 90 degrees that's fine I have my second one, which we wrap from the opposite way. Top oil rail. Bring it back around. Try not to let it scrape on the sides of the pistons. Looks pretty good. Ring number two is going to go on first. That's the dot. Dot's going up this particular case I've got it going to the back of the engine, the rear of the engine oil ring expanders there we go so there's your second compression ring this top ring there is no up or down there's no markings there's no beveled edges chamfers so it's all the same it doesn't matter which way you put this one on this one's this groove is 180 off from the other compression ring there we go now you have all of your gaps staggered Next up, we'll uh, start lubing these up and dropping them in the cylinder bores. I always put the journal down at the 6 o'clock. Your journal protectors. You see those? Not only do they, they protect your journal, your crank journal, but they also, if you have to tap the piston down, keeps your bearing from falling out this is the one one of the ones with the homemade oil squirter notch all right we have two important things here assembly lube and special sauce one last soft cotton wipe of the Some of that on there. Boom. Get that on there pretty good. 
arrow facing to the front. Your special sauce is just 30 weight oil. And more special sauce. Hold the pickle. Can I get this baby in there? It's gonna get hung up on those rings. Let me go ahead. They usually just rest right on here. Give it another good crank. And when you get all the way in there, she'll pop loose on you. Just like that. Got it into place. And we are seated. Oh. all right so we've got our rod cap here the notches in this this bearing half will match up to the notch in the other bearing half the smooth edge will match up to the the homemade oil squirter notch that we put in Want to just get that in there like so go it's a half inch hex it's only 5 16 thread we're just gonna snug them up that's all we're gonna do with all these is just snug them up until we can we'll flip the block over and then we'll torque them to spec there we go